few years ago, I shared a book idea with a publishing agent. As a woman who has great respect for the British monarchy, I mean, I did name my children Kate and Camilla after all, I wanted to write a book about us being Christian royalty. I want women to know that they are daughters of the king. Chiefly, you are a princess in God's kingdom. The agent shook off my idea and told me that women don't like to be thought of as princesses, and she dismissed my book. Well, maybe one day I will write it, but in the meantime, I'm gonna film this video for you. You, my friend, are a daughter of God. You are a co-heir with Christ and a princess in his mighty kingdom. There are certain privileges that you get to enjoy as a part of the royal family, and it's my job to tell you what they are because understanding your inheritance will change your life. We tend to humanize God because we often think about Jesus now as he was when he walked the earth. He was human, but he was also God. He was the God man. But at this very moment, he is seated on his throne in heaven next to the father. He's not in the exact same form that he was when he walked and talked with the disciples and the people of Israel 2000 years ago. He is now inhabiting the fullness of his holiness, his earthly mission being accomplished by defeating death and the grave, putting Satan in his place once and for all. He cannot be killed again. It is finished. I'd like for you to start considering Jesus in this form, inhabiting the fullness of his holiness. Let's think about holiness and holy places. When you visit a sacred place or participate in a holy rite or sacrament, there's an air of reverence and a weight of seriousness. There's a charge not to mess around and a somberness that words can't describe. Though God is our father and our friend, he is also holy. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And though other kings and queens of the earth sit on their man-made thrones, God sits on the throne of heaven, ruling for eternity. If we acknowledge this truth, by default, we have to accept our place in God's kingdom. We are his sons and daughters. Romans 8, 14 through 17 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. How often do you feel like the daughter of a king? Not usually, right? Consider this. You have been justified and declared innocent, and your sins have been atoned for by propitiation. Once you were estranged from God, and now you are reconciled to him. You have been regenerated into a new creation. Your sins are wiped clean, and you are in a right standing relationship with your father, embodying the same holiness as your dad. You are a divine daughter. That same reverence, seriousness, and somberness that I mentioned earlier regarding those holy places, it applies to your status in the kingdom of heaven. Let's shift for a moment and imagine Satan. His job is to tear down the kingdom. He has his demonic warriors stationed around the castle. And in our case, the castle is the global dominion of earth. We are princes and princesses ruling over our own territories, given to us by our dad, the king, and overseen by our big brother, Jesus. That makes our boundaries holy. Satan tears down our global castle by laser focusing his attacks on the bricks of our structure. 
He is a mastermind at war. If he attacks brick by brick, the castle loses its structural integrity. We have to be aware of Satan's plans. We have to understand his strategies. It is our job as King's kids to be alert, aware, and active against his plans. Our territories are on the line. We are charged with the responsibility to protect them at all cost. Would you sit by and allow holy places on earth, those places that have been revered for centuries, to be demolished? Of course not. You have to think of your God-given territory, your territory, in the same way. Protect it with your life. God doesn't leave you alone to protect your territory. You have an army at your disposal. Do you think a king would withdraw from the battle and leave his child alone to war against the enemy? No way. There is an entire angel army on your side. Turn to 2 Kings 7. Elisha and his servant encounter a company of God's angels while protecting a territory against the Arameans. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Even when we can't see, God's angels surround us. They are holy servants of the kingdom, sent to do many things, among them healing, supporting, guiding, and equipping, but also to war for God the King. Do you need support defending your territory? Ask your father for an angel army. Ask him for battle plans. Ask him to allow the angels to fight for you and for your land. It is his great pleasure to support you in battle. I hope our lesson today encouraged you to see yourself as your heavenly father sees you, a holy and anointed daughter of the king. Leave a comment sharing one way that you're going to ask God to change your view of yourself this week. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and join my free video devotional series, Fitness and the Father, by texting the word Whitney to 31996. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon.